All right, class, today we're going to be talking about non-objective relief sculptures, your first sculpture project that you can do. Um, the first thing that you want to make sure to do is that you have your cutting mat down below the surface that you're going to be working on and that you have all of your materials ready to go. You should have a piece of cardboard that's about six inches by eight inches long. This will be your back plate. This is where you're going to cut your pieces and glue them to. You're gonna want your craft knife, you're gonna want your cardboard scissors, and you're also gonna want your white glue to, for gluing down those pieces too. Now a relief sculpture is anything that comes off of the page just a little bit. We're not making something that's totally 3D for this project, but that it just comes off just a little bit so that it's just barely coming off the page. It's a little bit 3D, but not by a whole lot. So for this project, you're going to want to come and cut out with, on a separate sheet of paper some interesting shapes using our sculpture safety that we talked about in the last video. You're going to want to make sure that you are cutting your pieces as close to the edge as possible and being safe when you're doing so. For the first thing that I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut maybe a nice rectangle right here come by, make sure I'm using my tunnel method and cutting down and away, cutting as close to my corner as possible. That one didn't quite cut through, so I'll come back and do my second pass. And then it cuts off nice and easily. Now I might not glue this down right away, I might cut some more stuff and kind of play with where I want it to be located, but that'll be my first shape. Then I might come back and Maybe I want to make a triangle. So I might come here and cut a triangle using these two edges so that way I can cut it nice and easily, only having to cut one line. Come through, cut the line in between. To get that triangle. And I will just keep doing this until I have built up some interesting shapes that I want to work with. So maybe I have another square, maybe I do some organic shapes to add on to here. Maybe I come through and want to cut out some more interesting kind of wacky shapes um, with my cardboard scissors. Maybe I draw almost like a half moon or a, kind of like a Pac-Man shape almost, like a C. The first thing that I want to do is cut around it to make sure that my cardboard scissors can cut it. So I'm going to cut around it in a nice square. Since I don't want to try cutting this, this out with my craft knives, that would not be a good idea. It would be very difficult. Didn't quite cut through, so I'll have to come back and do another pass on that. All right, now it pops off nice and easy. Then I'll come back with my cardboard scissors to cut it out. Trying to cut on the inside of the C is going to be a little bit difficult, but shouldn't be too much of an issue. So I'll come with my cardboard scissors and then come back on the inside. Kind of rotating my cardboard as I cut. Note how I'm not turning my scissors, I'm turning the cardboard. Okay, and then I have it cut out. Missed a little spot right there. Go back and trim it up. And then I'll start gluing these down. Now you want to have quite a few shapes. This is way too few. Um, but I might go ahead and start gluing them down while I'm thinking about and cutting out some other shapes. Maybe you think that shape looks cool right on its own. Looks pretty interesting. Go through there. One of the other things that you can do is you can take your pencil and strip off the top layer of your cardboard to get to the corrugation underneath. That's the little wavy line in between the cardboard. So I can peel that up. Sometimes it works better, sometimes it does not work very well like it did there. But I can always take my pencil and kind of go through to help peel it up if it's being stubborn, like so. To reveal the cool texture underneath that first layer 
to create a more interesting texture for some of those shapes. So maybe I want to have another square, but I want it with this corrugation to make it different from my first square. Always a good idea to have some variety in your work. And just trying some of the corrugation as well. Maybe I want to make this into a triangle. So I might cut it here. It's pretty thin once you take off the top, so you can easily cut it with either the craft knife or the cardboard scissors. Both will work. And I might add it over one of the squares, and it gives me a different kind of texture to complement the smoothness of our regular cardboard. Once you're starting to glue stuff down, you don't need a whole bunch of glue, just a simple line around the outside edges, and then an X through the middle is more than enough of your white glue to stick it down. So maybe I stick that there, I come back with my corrugation and I put that over top for some interest. Go around my shape, X through the middle, and then stick this somewhere else to make it look interesting. I come back with my rectangle. And I'll just add shapes and shapes and shapes until it is interesting and cool looking to me. It doesn't have to be a ton, but you want more than just a few. The more shapes you add, the more interesting this looks. And since it's non-objective, it's not supposed to look like anything from the real world anyway. It's just supposed to be a little interesting looking, a little wacky, a little crazy. So as I go, I might layer my shapes, continue to add more and more as I go, stacking them up and creating more interest as I go along. Once I've got a whole bunch stacked up there, maybe a few more, um, I'll be all finished and that will be my whole project. You wanna have a good variety of those shapes as well. Well, that's all for now and I hope to see you guys in the next video.